Good morning, everyone. So nice to see you all out on this sunny day. Well, actually, even though we've got clouds, both the sun and the sun are shining, so it's wonderful to see you here. It's our Intercultural Sunday, where we're going to be exploring the theology of culture. I can all see you going, what? <laughs> And afterwards, uh, as you probably hear about in the announcements, we have our pre-Father's Day barbecue picnic. And uh, we've moved it all into the hall, so it'll be a lot of fun. Welcome to everyone who's online. Welcome to all of you in person. Welcome to anyone who's visiting us for the first time. Um, today, there's a number of different anniversaries to, to keep in mind or moments of commemoration. It is the 99th birthday of the United Church of Canada and we begin the celebrations today at four o'clock this afternoon if you checked your email you'll see that there was a link to a celebration service and there will be other events throughout the year to mark this historical moment for our church it's also the week where we commemorate uh, D-Day so 80 years ago many who lost their lives so that we can be gathered like this today it's also, I don't know if it was mentioned last month, but it's Pride Month so, and uh, Indi National Indigenous Month, so so many things to, to juggle and to keep in mind. But I'm going to begin with an attitude of gratitude. There's two that were passed on to me this week. One person's going to kill me. Jan, please stand up. <laughs> okay. So I mentioned we'd be starting this. So, um, Jan, uh, humble as she is, you may not have known, but she was just awarded a huge distinction. Uh, the Retired Teachers Association awarded her for distinguished service. She's, she's smiling at all of you and I got the look of death. So if you don't see me after the service, you know why. <laughs> and uh, Nancy and Jim, Jim's standing up in the back, but where's Nancy hiding? Nancy, stand up too, please. And I'd all like to direct your attention to over here. Our family area is almost complete. Please stop by. They've done incredible, incredible work to make it a welcoming, inviting, and exciting place for our families. Thank you. All right, I know there's lots of birthdays this month, so Phyllis Holt, Susan Cruikshank, Dave Lewis, June Hudo, any other birthdays that I may have missed? Sure, uh, Shirley, of course. Eric, your birthday too? Okay, I'm not going to remember all those, but we'll do our best. So, Michael, start us off. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to Phyllis and Susan and Dave and June and Shirley and Eric. Happy Blessings on you all. And June, anniversaries. Do we have June anniversaries? Shirley and Lynn, Eric and Bonnie, Wendy and Richard, Libby and Mario, Dini and Helen. Okay, you guys have to come up here. Come on up. There's too many of you. Come on up. Please come up, couples. Please come up. Susan Hawker, too, even though your, your sweetie's with us in spirit, so come on over. Come, Richard? Richard Buchanan. Yeah, that's you. <laughs> wow, we have a lot of June. It's also my parents' anniversary this month as well. Anniversary, yes. So, congregation, we lift our hands up to offer the blessing. Anniversary, people, 
your hands are like this to receive the blessing, okay? And it's may the blessing of our Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of our Lord. And it repeats. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. May the blessing of the Lord be upon you. We bless you in the name of the Lord. God's blessings be with you all. Woo! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. All right. So much news, and we haven't even started the announcements yet. Speaking of announcements, Sandy, you're up. Good morning, everybody. It's nice to see so many people out on this iffy weather day. I guess it's the promise of food. <laughs> Anyway, as always, I'll try to make this brief, highlight just a few items from the midweek message, but please refer to it for details. Uh, Merging Waters and Cedar Park are invited to a worship service in Ganawagi in October. <laughs> and if you wish to attend, please inform Joanne in the church office, even though it seems a long time away. They need to know numbers. Uh, it's time to review Broadview, renew, sorry, Broadview, an award-winning magazine about spirituality, social justice, and ethical living. Please inform Ivy Lewis if you're interested. The price is reasonable for an excellent magazine. As church winds down in June, please don't forget the food bank. A final donation would be much appreciated because the needs will continue. There are some interesting bursaries for post-secondary students offered by Affirm United, as well as other bursaries and summer job opportunities listed in the midweek message. So check it out if you know someone or you yourself would be eligible. Finally, please stick around for the church picnic after service today. Everyone is welcome and I've seen lots of food arriving. Yum. And now Jan would like to say something. My attitude for gratitude again this week. <laughs> so next week on Wednesday and Thursday will be the last two days that uh, the boutique will be operating before we close down for the summer. And I wanted to give a big shout out, a big attitude of gratitude to all those people who work on Wednesdays doing all the sorting and the cleaning up and the setting up of the boutique and those who work on Thursdays doing all of the selling and then the putting away of everything from that boutique. So an attitude of gratitude to all of you people. I'm not going to try and name you all because I'll forget somebody, but you know who you are. And thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. And now let us worship and I'll invite the choir to lead us in We Are the Family. family and we are the home we are the mountain where love can be known we are the voices and we are the hands for bringing peace to our land we are the family and we are the home we are the mountain where love can be known we are the voices and we are the hands for bringing peace to our land and in our family all are welcome doesn't matter who you are in our home there's always room so plan to stay 
On our mountain where we labor, there's much work that's left to do. And your talents would be helpful if you stay. Every planet, every race, everyone is always welcome to our home. And with our voices, let us tell you that we mean just what we say. And with our hands united, let us pray. That's kind of how we feel today, right? We are in the family. As we light this candle this morning, we remember and we honor the sacred fires around which first peoples have gathered to read, receive the stories of the Creator from elders, especially the Ganyan Gehaga, the Huron Wendat, and the Anishinaabe peoples. And we gather around this light to remind ourselves that we are called into community in your love. Let us pray. We gather here today as we always do, gracious and inviting God knowing you are here. We're anxious to be reassured about life and about our place in life. But today is not like other days because today we continue our journey once again on learning what it means to create beloved community. And as we take this time today to consider our role in creating spaces of welcome where all can be their authentic selves, help us to be mindful that we are all connected to each other, to the earth, and to you. Give us insight on what are the things we can and need to let go of so that you may come to live more fully in our lives. Give us the senses to notice injustice, spirits to risk in the name of those being oppressed, and hearts to embrace all who are wounded and traumatized. Continue to challenge us, O oh God, in our biases, and embrace us in our wrestling and learning. This we pray in Jesus' name, whose path we follow. Amen. Amen. So as uh, Michael gets ready to play our opening hymn, we were talking about this, and our, our hope is that you know these reflections and these learnings that we're going through with this intercultural learning, we, we pray it's leading to a path of both insight, inner reflection, but also of growth and understanding. And that's why these words to the next hymn really stood out for us. So please join us as you are able.
yes, I'm going to invite all of our young people to come on up. Jan, come over this way. So as they're coming up, we have a new friend with us today, and her name is Lucy. She has a name. She has a number of nicknames, but we, we won't get into those right now. And so Katie and Jackie come on over. and Evie come on and over. Olivia, come and meet our new friend come Lucy. On over. Oh, and Caden's here too, I think. Hi. 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 There he is. Why don't you guys oh. So we're, we're going we're gonna to play a kind of game. Here. Come on over here. Come on over here. Not on the stairs though, because I don't want anybody following this time. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we're gonna pretend we're gonna pretend we're at school or we're at daycare, and there's a new kid. There's a new kid that's coming to school or to daycare. I'm gonna do this. I'm not sure how we feel about the new kid. I can't remember who the kid is. Okay. <laughs> Let's do a little song. Who knows? know this one. My little light, this little light of mine. Do you know that song? Let's do it, okay? Put your finger up, put your light up. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Uh-oh, we've got a new person in the room and she's not, she's bigger than all of us. I'm not sure if I like her. And look, her skin, it's a different color. I, I'm not sure about that. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Excuse me, do you have something to offer us? Maybe? I play music. Oh, do you like music? Yeah. Okay. Give, us, give us an example. Little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, maybe she's not so bad after I'm all. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Now, I'm, I'm gonna take this light. I'm gonna take. This light around the world, I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna take this little light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. I'm gonna take this little light around the world. I'm gonna let it shine. 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 Woo Let's get up and dance. Let's go. One more time. Come on, 
visit us on a regular basis. So we're going to move into a time of, if I can get this back on, there we go, intercultural learning. And I'm going to start by reminding you that we've added all of our name tags to this place. If you haven't, you're with us intentionally. And like this pattern on this lovely, old, worn, lived woolen blanket, if we took out one of the colors, it just wouldn't be the same. And as it holds stories and connections, this place holds our stories and our connections to each other. Reminding our time and things we'd agreed on in our time of togetherness, things such as encouraging each other in our learning, having an open mind, using critical thinking, being non-judgmental and mostly important respect. And I'll turn it over to Libby, my co-pilot for today. I also want to remind you, am I on, Jim? Yep. Yes, okay. <clears throat> that when we come together in groups and we have discussions, there are some things to be mindful of. Stay engaged. If you're like me, my mind tends to wander off fairly regularly. <laughs> um, and I get, I lose my place in a discussion or so we're asking you to try and stay engaged today, stay and listen to what is going on. Why am I uncomfortable about what we're discussing? Ask yourself that question. Allow yourself to experience discomfort. Often in a discussion, we discuss something we're discussing something and, oh my goodness, I'm really not comfortable with this topic. That's okay. We all have that happen to us. Allow yourself to be discomfort. Di discomfort. That Discomforted? Word. Uncomfortable. 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 Un <laughs> oh, the Lord. Uncomfortable. I'm so glad you <laughs> Sometimes those first reactions teach you, teach us something. Also, speak your truth. We're here to listen to each other, to learn from each other. Feel free to speak your truth. What is the truth for you? And also, expect and accept non-closure. Sometimes we get into a discussion and we don't finish it. And um, we may not agree with each other. That's okay. You can go home today not agreeing with your neighbor, but it's given you something to think about. Thank you. So a bit of an introduction to this, and I'm, I'm going to start it off with um, the words of Henry Nguyen. Anybody familiar with Henry Nguyen? Oh, check that, check him out. Yes, some of you are. So he says, to be chosen as the beloved of God is something that is radically different. Instead of excluding others, it includes others. And instead of rejecting others as less valuable, it accepts others in their own uniqueness. It's not competitive, but it's a compassionate choice. Our minds have great difficulty in coming to grips with such a reality. Maybe our minds will never understand it. Perhaps it is only our hearts that it can accomplish this. Every time we hear about chosen people, or chosen talents, or chosen friends, we almost automatically start thinking about elites. And we find ourselves not far from feelings of exclusion or jealousy or anger or resentment. Not seldom has the perception of others as being chosen led to aggression, violence, and war. Now those are the words of Henry Newman. So today, 
Um, we're going to hear a passage that will guide us from Sandy in just a moment. And uh, then we'll talk a little about what we're going to run through. So yeah, go ahead, Sandy. Run on up to the podium. <laughs> The scripture today is Peter 2, verses 9 and 10. It's very short. But you are the ones chosen by God, chosen for the high calling of priestly work, chosen to be a holy people, God's instruments to do this work and speak out for God, to tell others of the night and day difference God made for you, from nothing to something from rejected to accepted. May the Holy One add understanding to these words. Thank you, Sandy. So what's today gonna look like? Well, of course, there's gonna be lots of music, you know that. But we're gonna run through the definitions of multicultural, cross-cultural, and intercultural to determine what do we want to aspire to? And what are the differences between not only these terms, but how they play out in, with people? Um, then we're going to talk a bit more about beloved community and what it means. And then we'll briefly touch on our next steps for September. How does that sound? Good. Nobody's run yet. Yay. So I'm going to let, let me lead. Okay. I'm going to get you to work for a few minutes. I want you to find someone that you can talk to, just one person, and describe a setting, a setting in which you feel fully included and where you can be fully yourself. Describe, talk about a setting where you feel fully included and can be fully yourself. Just talk with your neighbor for a couple of minutes. You have one minute each. doing a lot of thinking. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of thinking about that. Mm. I don't know that I can name one. Oh, so maybe mention that. I mean, in the past, I Welcome back. Ding, 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 ding. Welcome back. If you can hear me, clap once. If you can hear me, clap twice. If you can hear me, clap three times. It works with youth groups. It works with you. So welcome back. So I can see those were some really rich conversations. And uh, if you can flip to the next one, please. So what are some of the things you heard Microphone. I need to steal that mic, Al. Um, what are some of the things you heard in those settings that allowed you to feel authentic? Oh, sure. So last week I had my study leave. Thank you, wonderful community, for um, allowing me to have this time away. And for the first three days of my study week, I journeyed with the Black Clergy Network of the United Church of Canada. It was the first time they gathered, I think, in over six years or something like that. I can't tell you 
what the experience was like to feel completely seen and completely heard. Clergy, people of color, women, diaconal ministers, people of Caribbean and indigenous descent. So there was no what I call code switching. If you don't know that term, I invite you to look it up. There was no changing my language or my way of communicating for people to understand. I was fully myself. Oh, what a gift. So Al, where'd you go? I thought you were running. <laughs> so what are some of the things that we heard that we were in places that allowed us to feel ourselves? Anyone? We had two over here. Break the ice. Well, I, I feel... It is on? Ah, there we go. I said I feel at home in my fa with my family, uh, in my own home, in my sister's home, in my brother's home, when we're gathering around the table having dinner together and having conversation. And I feel at home in nature, very much at home. Why? I feel, why? Because I feel that I'm, I'm just in a safe place and I'm mm. yet I'm in a place that is very Safety. expensive and 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 the, a place where I can just think what I want to think and mm -hmm. and do whatever I want to do um, and walk the way I want to walk and and also I feel at home at my cottage I call it my sanctuary mm. yeah I feel very much at home there and thank you Carol and Shirley behind you I hope you're thinking of your answers, people, because I'm coming here next. Well, I feel at home here mm. with all of you. I don't know why, but I do, and I feel very comfortable with everybody. Mm, thank you, Shirley. Whether people feel comfortable with me, that's a different story. We do. We do. We do. So it would be interesting um, as a takeaway for you, Shirley, to reflect on what are the things that make you feel that comfortable in this space? So you don't have to answer that now, but think about that, because that's something that we need to hear, right? It's part of us being aware of how we build authentic community. Any other, someone else want to join in? What are some of the things you heard? There we go, Anne-Marie. Brave soul she is. Oh, okay, I'll be brave. I was thinking that to be truly myself, it has to be one-on-one, -on -one, just with one person. Mm. And the per uh, two, two people came to my mind, a very close friend and my daughter. But I didn't get any further. I always felt there was a little piece I held back with my daughter, another little piece with my friend. So I don't have any more to say than, yes, as long as you can be yourself, well, you have people and they are truly listening. I guess that's it. People are truly listening to what you are. Mm. Thank you. And, and that speaks a lot to, you remember the iceberg that we went through, our identities, what's above the line and what shapes us and what's below the line? Anyone else? Last one? There has to be another brave soul on this side. Oh, Katie. Um, I feel truly comfortable in myself when I'm with my younger sister. Uh, she's been with me since I've grown up, and uh, I feel fully comfortable with her because we have no secrets between each other, so anytime something happens, we talk about it together to work through our feelings. So, because we have no secrets, I feel like I, I don't hide myself completely when I'm with her. Thanks, Kate. So interesting, uh, as uh, Libby gets ready for the next part, so some of the things that came out, spaces where we can feel truly ourselves with family, well, for me, with the Black Clergy of the United Church, in nature, there's safety in our cottage, in church, feeling comfortable one-on-one, -on -one, close friend and daughters uh, who truly listen, and with people like our sisters where we can talk and share freely. You're up. I'm up? I think so. So let's think about culture. What is culture? Um, there, we are going to describe th 
three different concepts of culture. One is multicultural. This is a multicultural society we live in. Canada's multicultural, Quebec is multicultural, probably each of your towns is multicultural. Is this church multicultural? No, I think it is. We've just moved into a new residence and boy is it multicultural. Very, very interesting. So there are many cultures and we come together. And when we come together it's called cross-cultural. And this is where perhaps the problems begin. Because we really don't know what's happening between the cultures and we don't know if it's bad or if it's good. <clears throat> there are issues of power in cross-cultural. There may be, they may not be, but it may be that when you're in a relationship, in a cross-cultural relationship, there are issues defined by the dominant culture. This used to be a white Protestant culture. And used we know it used to be, you think it still is. There you go. My assumption. I, th I, th I thought it changed. Your lived experience tells you it hasn't changed. Different perspectives. Different perspectives. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I'm learning. One dominant culture, um, one dominant group to which all the others respond to. This group sets the agenda for what's happening. It's like um, cultural supremacy, cultural imperialism, racism happens. I want to tell you, I'm interjecting my little story. Go for it. I was at my granddaughter's graduation last June in Ottawa at Carleton University and I was just thrilled to bits. After the graduation ceremony, we were taking pictures in various parts. And the African community, which was very present, were budding into line, knocking me off my feet with my cane, being very exuberant and very joyful. And I got mad. <laughs> Who the heck do they think they are? said in my head and after we left the ceremony I said that to my daughter I'm not proud of this people and my daughter said mother you're being a racist and I said no no, no. yes I am you know I'm white get out of my way you know my granddaughter is here and let her be in the front what I didn't know is African cultures love to celebrate these wonderful events for their children. I've since learned more about the African culture. My granddaughter, my other granddaughter, is dating and very serious with an African gentleman who's just a delightful person. But that's how quickly our minds can trip us up. Cross-cultural. People are often de uh, defined as an insider or an outsider, and that's what I was doing. You're outsiders. There are some strong themes about insider-outsider issues within scripture and the history of Christianity. Let's look a little bit more closely at this. The gospel calls us to be different calls us to something different, excuse me. This led to Indian residential schools. Let's civilize those Indians. That was necessary for colonization. 
This is also necessary for war. This may happen when someone joins a new church organization. Oh well, you have to fit in. You have to do it our way. You may be welcome, but do it our way. This occurs when one group believes it should make all the rest just like itself. You gotta be like me, like us. Thank you, Libby. So I'm just gonna jump into a bit of terms just so that we're all on the same page. Uh, stereotyping, something you've probably heard, something you've probably done. I've done it myself, unfortunately, many times. So this is the, the perceptual process of adopting and applying beliefs about the characteristics of either a group or a, or a group of people. For example, all black people have rhythm. Not all black people have rhythm. All children are loud. No, not all children are loud and rambunctious. <laughs> Or all religions are X, Y, Z, or, 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 right? So it's making that belief that you think about maybe one experience with one person and using it for a group of people. Prejudice. This is a par partially based on assumptions and generalizations that prevents objective consideration of behavior situation. So you make a decision about someone or something based, again, on a generalization that all people or situations act in a certain way. Discrimination is an unfair treatment of person or groups based on prejudice. That one's pretty straightforward. And racism is a belief that one race is superior, reinforced by corporate or institutional power and privilege and the power to impact negatively in systemic ways on another group of person or persons. The term race in itself is a social construct, right? Most historians or anthropo... Anthro... What's the word in English? Anthropologists? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> or sociologists, they describe human races as a social construct. There is only one race, and that is the human race. And even those who reject that formal concept of race, however, still use that word race in day-to-day -day speech to define or, or segregate people. Um, before I get into intercultural, I'm going to ask you to go back two slides, if you wouldn't mind. Three slides. Yes. So, uh, no, one more. So multicultural, you have uh, groups, you have cultures of different people. There isn't really any interaction. So you have like uh, Chinatown, right? And you have Little Burgundy, but there's, there's, no, there's no connection. There's no learning. There's no sharing. Next one. Cross-cultural, like Libby said, there's some kind of something happening but we don't know what the power dynamics are like, if it's a healthy exchange or not. There could be issues of power. There's a dominant culture that people sort of have to mold to, towards, and that happens often in a cross-cultural situation. All right, let's go forward, forward, boom, intercultural. I love this model, not because there's so many colors and I love colors, but this is what we can aspire to. Every person, every culture is allowed to stand in full dignity of difference. Let me repeat that. Everyone can stand in full dignity of difference. All are children of God, seen fully as created by God. All are allowed to stand in mutual, respectful, equitable relationship, fully aware of and able to celebrate their culture and dignity. So when we move from tolerance of another culture or cultures to celebration of other culture or cultures, 
all can shape each other, right? So we can see there's like all kinds of movement. And people shape each other or choose not to be shaped. However, from a position of equal power. There's no dominance. Each is aware of their own identity, their own iceberg above and below the line and its potential impact on others. So when I meet Libby, I would realize what's shaping, you know, <laughs> how am I interacting with Libby and, and fully comfortable and aware of my own identity as she would be with hers. This model is authentic community. And I think of merging waters when I think of this because it's made up of a people with a wide range of spiritual and religious beliefs. And we saw that last week. I've been hearing lots of echoes of last week's service. And we value that. And we learn from one another. And people feel welcome. I, I'm reminded of, and Anna Marie reminded me this week, Leah, remember Leah who came in um, and shared with us? She said when she walked in our doors, she's not religious, but she felt comfortable. That speaks a lot to who we are. Now, another thing about this is that there's this incredible messiness, right, with intercultural. They're, the lines are squiggly, they're not, which is kind of cool. Um, <laughs> But there's all this movement around when we're talking about culture or difference, we're talking about age, generational differences, class, ethnic identity, ability, ethno-identity, language, deaf culture, um, ability, gender. I mean, the list goes on. So there's a lot going on here. And each culture decides what's non-negotiable. So there will be certain values that are non-negotiable, except, as an example, I should say, respect, right? Um, and what can be shaped by the other? Okay, maybe my Caribbean beat can be influenced by your Latino, right? And that's cool. But there'll be other aspects of my Caribbean heritage that cannot be shaped or will not be influenced by another. So how much they interact with the other um, and what they decide to allow to be shaped is all from an equal position of power. And that's really important. It's not saying, Patty, your cultural heritage of XYZ is going to dictate how we're going to do our community supper, right? It's going to be, hey, what uh, family recipes you got going on, girl? And um, let me see what I can bring to the table. <laughs> um, so fully appreciated by each other, full, fully understandable to self. And I love, next slide, I think, yes. I love Martin Luther King's idea of community. He says our goal is to create a beloved community and this will require a qualitative change in our soul as well as a quantitative change in our lives. So this notion of beloved community from an early 20th century theologian, which was later adopted by Martin Luther King, it's not an absence of conflict in that model. So where there it can be conflict, it will still be from a place of equality. And that's a very different thing. Next one. All cultures are equally able to understand each other, learn from each other, shape each other, and choose to maintain their own identity. So it's beloved community is not just intercultural or a relationship across cultures. Rather, it's a relationship across all differences including culture, ethnicity, say, sex, age, social class, ability, and etc. And this is our goal. This can be our goal and what we aspire to. So shalom, peace, right relationship. Some people call it God's kingdom. And it's what we pray for when we pray the Lord's Prayer. This is what we're praying for, a world like this. And I don't think we'll see it fully realized in my lifetime, but guess what? I'm going to try to make it happen. Um, Libby? Yes? Would you like to take the small 
through, I'm going to skip part because okay. I'm looking at time okay. and I'm going to turn it over to you. I'm going to get you to work again for a few minutes. Uh, I'd like you to get together again in a small group and discuss what would it take to make a beloved community a reality? A reality. What would it look like for each individual and, and, and the culture to be fully themselves? Is that up up here? Yeah, okay. So you can ask each other, what would your culture insist on of other cultures? What is your culture willing to give up to make this a reality? What would your culture see as non-negotiable and want to hold on to? Important questions. Two minutes. Two minutes. Please. You're all sitting there looking stunned. Okay, I hate to break you up. I hate to break it up. But you can continue this conversation at our picnic. <laughs> so, very quickly, uh, let's name one or two or three things that... ...of, for, of other cultures. So, respect. Carlin? Well, Eric and I said active listening. Active listening. So active listening and respect. We have one more. Tolerance, tolerance and tolerance. Indeed. And I, and I think that is absolutely natural, <laughs> right? And then what's interesting is what would we want to give up? to make it a reality. That's a, that's a challenging one. I think we're going to bring that one back in September because there's some other pieces to this particular session that we won't have time for today, but we're going to we'll dive back into them in September so we have space to wrestle with them and tease them out. If you wouldn't mind switching. Next one. So I'm going to leave you with one thought. The world, and this is by Wade Davis, the world in which you were born is just one model of reality. Other cultures are not failed attempts at being you. They are unique manifestations of the human spirit. So in September, we will continue to unpack this. We're going to finish up today and look at how other ways culture operates. We're going to look at the roots of Canadian culture, and we're going to start to jump into power and privilege. <sighs> it, will be, it will be good learning in community. 
So this is the time in our service where we think about how we can offer our time, our talents, and our resources, both to this church community, to our wider neighborhood, and to the world. So I would invite you, as the choir leads us in the offering song, to be intentional when that plate passes, what's the one thing you're going to do this week to make that a reality? We've There we go. Come on up, Richard. So uh, these amazing young people are going to help me pray over all of our gifts and all of the intentions. So do you remember? We're going to put our hands. I'm going to come closer. They won't bite. <laughs> so we're going to put our hands over here. Can you put your hand over there? Yeah? Okay. And we're going to pray together. O oh, loving God, God of beloved Shalom, today we dedicate this offering of our time, our talents, and our resources to your work in our neighborhood and around the world. May it find the places desperately in need of love, and may it be a beacon of hope for all. And we say, Amen. Thank you. So Katie and Olivia, do you want to go put that up on the communion table together? Can you manage that? Thank you. And we'll say bye to Lucy for now. Bye, Lucy. Thank you for all your help. Now you can you can walk this way if you want to show what you guys were making. <laughs> Thank you for the love. You made my day. Oh, how blessed are we, eh? So let us 
Let us bring our minds together in an intentional prayer for individual concerns and concerns for the community and in the wider world. We come before you, O oh God, arms akimbo and legs entangled. Knotted together, we stumble before you. In your blessings, you soothe and smooth, fitting and forming, rearranging us and weaving us into one body in Christ. In your blessing, you take what we give and who we are, tooling our gifts and ourselves into your mission for an aching world. Thank you, O oh Spirit, for that inspiration of hope. We pray for all those who are on our prayer list, and we add Volker to those names. For God to offer care and comfort. Amen. And today we're going to pray the prayer that we've heard so many times. And today, as we pray and we hear the words again through music, Let's be intentional in our knowledge that the whole community of Christ in the world prays with us, knowing that God equips each of us for creating beloved community and that kingdom on earth.
bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you day by day. May God's peace, God's joy, God's presence be with you every stage of life's journey. And may you live and be God's beloved Shalom. Amen. And yes, you can be seated because the choir has one last treat for you. Now, there is going to be a concert here uh, this afternoon, so I would invite you to take all your stuff after the service and boom in the hall. And anyone who wants to help clean up, feel free to stay. <laughs>